State of the Sun Devils with Jeremy Schnell, Jesse Morrison, and Mitch Vereldis, an Arizona sports podcast. Hello and welcome inside Mountain America Stadium after an ASU loss here tonight to Oklahoma State. They took this one 27 to 15 in an interesting matchup that is kind of like a tale of two halves, I would say, guys. Again, um, weird. It, it's it's uh, weird. I, in terms of decision making, a lot of going for it on fourth down, a lot of run plays on third down to set up fourth down. Um, Kenny Dillingham, this is the second game as a head coach. Just Jesse, your thoughts on his decision making here tonight? Well, I kind of liked the Sparky formation, I guess this is what they call it, where they did, it's basically like the Wildcat for most teams, I kind of understand probably why ASU doesn't want to call it the Wildcat. Hmm. Um, that was cool. It, it had a lot of success, especially early. Um, I didn't really understand when they did it with Jalen Conyers instead of a running back. That was a little bit interesting. But really the big decision that I think needs to be questioned is Kenny Dillingham going for it in ASU territory on fourth and one uh, with about six minutes left to go, only down 20 to 15 at the time. Um, they could have punted it away, gotten a stop. Um, they did not convert it. And I also don't understand the play call on that one either. Why was it a throw from shotgun? and not, you know, from the pistol, a run play, or from under center, a run play. Just di That just didn't really make a lot of sense to me, and it didn't work out, and it, I, football games aren't decided on one play, but that play was surely one that decided a lot in this game, I think. You know, I think it's funny you say that, because I very much do believe that a lot of this game ended up being decided by one play, and I'm not gonna, bl I'm not gonna play the blame game, but it's kind of a big deal when one of your better receivers has a grand opportunity to make a massive gain and the ball doinks off of their chest. <laughs> it is just a brutal way to kill all the momentum that ASU would have had. You just had a great defensive stop against Oklahoma State. You've got the momentum going your way with that pass. Guillory had nobody in front of him. Nobody. And to drop the ball, I honestly think that that was the absolute turning point in this game, Jeremy. Listen, in, in terms of we're, we're kind of expecting this to be some growing pains at this point, guys. Sure. This is a very young head coach. Uh, we really, obviously, we all very really like his, his attitude, and yeah. it seems that his players really respond to the way he coaches the team. But, uh, you know, going for it on fourth down, I believe it was five times tonight. They were one for five on fourth down and six for 15 on, on third downs, but it wasn't necessarily the six for 13 that bothered me, or 15, whatever it was. It was the fact that they were getting into these short yarded situations and they were playing for fourth down, it seemed like. Like they were doing another running play on mm -hmm. third and three or third and one, right? If you're gonna play for, for fourth down, might as well take a shot on those plays, right? Well, I mean, it was asked about a couple of times in the post-game presser, and Kenny was identifying the fact that they set up in the 3-3-5, and a lot of times throughout the game, they were just giving them the opportunities to set up in 14 personnel and really just attack them on the ground game. And when you've got that mojo from those kinds of formations, I understand the willingness to say, you know, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and when it works, it keep doing it. That's why we saw a lot of the Sparky formation tonight, I think, if you can take advantage on the ground, you're gonna get places. But if you look at the box score, they didn't really take advantage on the ground. There wasn't a great rushing game from ASU tonight in an opportunity game where you could have a great rushing game. Scadaboo looked better tonight, I would say. Um, in the first some, half, there was, some, yeah. there was some push by the offensive line in the first half. And unfortunately, I mean, they lost their starting right tackle pretty early on. And, and they the were already the without game. their left tackle too. Yeah, no so. Isaiah Glass and then no Bowley either. Yeah, so I mean, like that that's a big deal. Obviously, the, it, they held up pretty strong in the first half and then uh, as the second half wound, wound down seemed like Rashada was scrambling to try and get out of pressure every single play. Um, in terms of just Rashada's play, Jesse, what did you see from him tonight? Again, I thought it was pretty good, especially in that first half. 
Uh, the deep throw to Badger was that ended up being a touchdown was a little behind him, but Badger's so fast that <laughs> he's wide open. <laughs> yeah, it didn't yeah. really matter um, that he had to turn around and catch that one. We'll I mean, put it, my uh, beautiful shot right here. Uh, uh, Jeremy, <laughs> uh, Jeremy, uh, enough of taking credit for your, your beautiful shot. Hey, this is job, you know? Yeah, it is, it is, but, but you know, that, enough that of that. spiral, you can just see uh, it through goodness, my camera Goodness, goodness right, gracious, going Jeremy, going enough. Relax. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I just, that, that throw was pretty good. Um, he had some throws across the middle that were good. Uh, the pass to Guillory was perfect, right on the money. Ended up just not working out. Um, that would have been a good highlight in the second yeah. half for him. So overall, I think, you know, I think he's the guy going forward. I don't want them to switch anything. He's a freshman he's gonna make some mistakes but he's just got an ability to make some big plays and on that drive that he had the touchdown to badger there was a third and nine that he scrambled on that was just a beautiful scramble and he tiptoed along the sideline and got the first down so i would like to see that more yeah for sure but I, there, there was a play in the first half where i was like okay i i like that because he didn't force it right and he took technically a sack it was a one yard loss would have liked to see him throw it away possibly but you see the decision making there it seems like he's making sure that he doesn't throw the interception going through his reads yes. going through his progressions he's getting a better understanding of the play yeah, right but the there field. was a there was one play in particular that i thought was his best throw of the night it was a third down and long he threw it uh he scrambled out he threw it to the sideline badger made a great catch he was under a lot of pressure on that play badger made an insane catch and you know fought forward for the first down i thought that was his best play of the night and if he can do that and continue to do that moving forward um, I think ASU has, has themselves a quarterback, man. And, and the interception wasn't great, but especially with it giving the ball to Oklahoma State in ASU territory. Um, but ASU's defense stopped the Cowboys there, and that was – so, you know, it didn't end up being that bad. And only one interception for, through his first two games is – pretty solid for a freshman quarterback yes that they were playing an fcs opponent last week but with everything that happened in the <laughs> second half yeah he, he totally probably could have thrown an interception last week so overall i think he's trending in the right direction but i'm just again the dillingham decision making is just i just didn't realize he was this much of a gambler of like a a riverboat kind of coach it just it, it, that i did not realize that when he came here i i don't know if that was something that i didn't watch enough oregon football last year to to know if they did a lot of that but it's just it's a lot and i think it's something that he's gonna have to grow from and i i like aggressive you know he said it last week he, he quoted bruce arians no risk it no biscuit you're gonna have to do stuff like that but not all the time not like again you've got a punt there with six minutes left try to get a stop on defense because again you're only down five points i just i just didn't know how much of a gambler this guy was so here's what i think i'm thinking and i can't confirm this of course i'm thinking in kenny dillingham's mind he's watching his offense which by the way Scored zero points in the second half. Three last week. Scored zero points in the second half in this game. Three in last week's uh, second half and zero tonight. If I'm Kenny Dillingham and I'm looking at how the offense is really struggling and going through the motions really in the second half, man, I got to try anything to give them a little juice, a little jolt of energy. And if that means giving them a fourth down call that maybe gets the guys excited, like, oh, okay, coach is calling a fourth down. He wants us to go for it got to be fired up got to be amped got to be ready to go i don't know that it's necessarily like a gamble because this game was very very close in the second half until it just completely got away from them in the fourth quarter so if i'm kenny dillingham i'm guessing that going through his mind he's thinking i gotta just keep this offense motivated i gotta keep them on the field my defense has been kicking butt this game i can't let them keep going out there and keep trying to cover for the offense in the second half in terms of uh I'm going to wrap the bow on Rashada's performance tonight real quick. You know, there were, there were times in the second half where I'm like, you know, maybe Trenton Borgay would have been able to make that throw. But hmm. we but, knew you were going to bring this but, up. But here, I would not oh. have made the decision. To okay, you, good. Yeah, go I, ahead. I would not have made a decision if I were the head coach to take Rashada out. And here's the reason why. These games, they do matter to the kids. But who it matters to the most is Rashada. Yep. He's 18 years old. 
he needs to get this experience. He needs to feel these defeats, unfortunately. And next year when these games do matter, when, when it comes to you know bowl eligibility, he's gonna have this in the back of his mind. Okay, this is what happened last year. This is what didn't work. And um, I think that's why they, they should have kept him in the game. Maybe Borge, you know, drives them down the field and, and gets them a touchdown and wins them this game. But I don't think that would have been good for the um, confidence of Rashad. So I think Rashad might be 20, actually. I think he said that. He might be a little bit older for his. So uh, this is a tough yeah. question. And we're obviously looking at it from our point of view. But would you rather see this ASU team win if it means throwing out a quarterback that you're comfortable with and familiar with? Or do you want Rashada to learn from every possible opportunity, even if it means they end up, and I'm not trying to speak this into existence, even if it ends up meaning that they don't win another game the rest of this year? Uh, I mean, if they're, they, again, they're not going to a bowl game, but. The, forget about that for a second. Do you want the most opportunities for Rashada, or do you want this team to try and go out there and win every game, even if it means throwing in a different quarterback? That's my question. I just, I, I just don't think that's gonna happen. So right, I like. So you I, want Rashad? I want Rashad to okay. continue being the quarterback here because, just more upside. I think he's shown that he can play, and he's got some more talent than Trenton Borgay does, and it has the. I think they have a better chance to win with Jaden Rashad than they do with Trenton Borgay. So, I think one in eleven, like that, that's there. That's not gonna happen. Um, and so I think you keep rolling out Rashada because again he he's not been bad like he's been pretty good. So if this was something where he was coming out here in like nine for twenty three, then yeah maybe you switch to somebody else, but not right now. In terms of the the running game, I know we touched on it a little bit with with uh, what we saw from Scadaboo. Um, just overall thoughts of the first half in in terms of the the running game, Mitch. Scadaboo staying on his feet. Yeah. Bouncing, making nice cuts, using his blockers to his advantage. I thought Cam had an awesome first half. Now, we're obviously looking at it from two different sides for the second consecutive week. But given that we weren't necessarily impressed by Cam in the week one game, this week two game, I'm all about Scadaboo after that Especially in that Sparky formation. Yeah. He's, <laughs> I joked he should trademark it because he basically owns that formation right now. Yeah, he looked really good in that formation. He looked really good in the first half. To Carlos Brooks looked really good in the first half. Second half, again, just they weren't as good. So I don't think they have the dynamic rushing attack that we've seen over the past four or five years from ASU where they had Rashad White and um, X validate but I think these are capable running backs they've just got to have a full complete four quarters where they're all having success instead of just having some success here and then not having some success there because you've got to be able to run the football for a young quarterback now in fairness and whether we want to give them a little bit of ease as a result of this but as we mentioned no starting left tackle, no starting right tackle. It's very, yeah. very difficult to establish a running game, let alone a passing game, when you don't have your blind side and your your four side blocker. Yep. Defense, I would say tonight, they had problems tackling in the second half, especially on that final drive that kind of sealed it for Oklahoma State. Um, just overall thoughts on, on the defense, Jesse? Uh, I was actually pretty impressed, to tell you the truth. Until the end of the game, yeah. Sure, so. yeah. I mean, but. They're probably tired by that point. Again, yeah. it was super hot tonight. So, I, sidebar, I'm touching the back of this wall right now. Are you sticking? It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I could like it's burning my leg. For the people just listening, we are um, like on a little space, like right in Is front it of. It's still over 100 degrees right now. It might be. I mean, I'm it's sweating. Hot. I'm sweating sheets. But yeah, we're we're standing on a concrete like patio in between some stands and the field and like a walkway and the nice little yeah, oven the, over here we've got yeah going. it's still hot when you touch the concrete uh where we're standing you guys so should have, you should, uh, also another side note it was hot on the field really hot but when you walk behind the um when you walk behind the bench uh because the fans are taking all of the air it's like just no air 
Ugh. It's just so oh, disgusting. Gosh. Yeah, so <laughs> shout out Jeremy for being a trooper and getting, oh, that, getting that great shot uh, mm -hmm. despite the heat and you know being out here in now with, now in, imagine uh, being the defense <laughs> yeah imagine being the defense but yeah bj green unbelievable performance he, he was fantastic he, he might play on sundays hashtag lead devil he, he had a really good game a couple of sacks a couple of his sacks came when they needed it like one i believe was on a fourth down one i believe was on a third down so yeah th those were huge plays for bj um i think that He's going to really be the anchor of this defensive line this season. Um, Secondary-wise, again, I thought this would be the strength of the team. I'm not so sure that it's – it is. They've just kind of been eh the past couple of games. And, yes, they were playing three quarterbacks. But I got to tell you, Oklahoma State, they have three quarterbacks, but they don't have a quarterback, if you get what I'm saying. Like, hmm. none of those guys were very good, to be completely honest. Offense moved the best when they got uh – their third quarterback into the game. Yeah, Garrett Garrett Rangel, Garrett Rangel yeah. probably the best. Gunnar Gundy, second best. Alan Bowman, who started the game and played a lot of the first half, did not impress me at all. I think that's one of the reasons why ASU was in this game so much is because that guy was just not having it tonight. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the secondary got to play a little bit better. Uh, there were some calls in the secondary that were debatable, so that, that kind of made their performance look a little bit worse than it, it could have. Um, but yeah, the defensive line, really, really happy with how they played, especially with uh, B.J. Green. I think it's difficult to judge them because the defense got exposed a lot towards the end of the game. But Oklahoma State was on the field for over 30 minutes in this one, offensively. Yeah. And after a while, and we've, we've talked about the heat, so surely they feel the effects of the heat with the extra, you know, close to 15 pounds of stuff that they're wearing on their bodies. I can only imagine how difficult it is to have to be on the field for 31 minutes of game time with three different quarterbacks, with a rushing attack that, you know, uh, was very successful. Oklahoma State got a lot of chunk plays in this game and a lot of chunk plays that set them up in those opportunities. But what really impressed me was after those chunk plays, was ASU's ability to hold strong when in the red zone. Yeah, they allowed a couple of red zone touchdowns tonight, but to limit them to field goal opportunities yeah. within the 20s, outstanding on their part. Yeah, and, uh, you know, defense just got to go home and, and do what Gambo says, and uh, you, get, you got you got to get that Pedialyte. You got to get that Pedialyte. <laughs> um, for Pedialyte, it works wonders. A, cu a couple things to, to talk about before we get out of here. Only four penalties tonight. Pretty good. Good, yeah. Cleaned up on that. Yes. Um, drew nine penalties from Oklahoma State. Awesome. Good. Yep. Uh, Want to do that. Only one turnover with the interception by Rashada. One turnover in the in the two games. That's it from the team. It they, was they good did, coverage they by did OK fumble, State. And so did Oklahoma State. But, but they, they recovered each it. Each of them yeah. recovered, yep. recovered it. Right. Um, so, I mean, they got to force some turnovers, I think, mm -hmm. the defense. If you want to be able to – be in games like this. Obviously, they were in this until the very end. But if if they could have put Oklahoma State away, yeah. In the first half, they were up by five. They had the ball. They went for it on fourth down. Didn't get it. They could have went up by eight at the end of the first half. And then they got the ball to start the second half. They couldn't get any points. Obviously, in that time frame when they got the ball back, or at all in the second half. Um, uh, last side note before we get out of here: Pac-12 got as far as 18 and 0 which is hilarious. What a banner way to go out, right? <laughs> yeah. But they got 18-0 and 0 to start the season. U of A, of course, first team to lose. They lost to Mississippi State today. Darn right. Um, they now uh, are the Pac-12 up to three losses. Or I four believe. losses. Yeah. Cal ended up losing to Auburn. And, Stanford and then Stanford lost. played USC. So somebody was going to lose today. Yeah. I got some Pac-12 takes before we get out of here. Ooh. Number one, Dion. Colorado, that team is here to compete this season. They're definitely not going to go three and nine. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure they're going to make it to the Pac-12 championship game, but eight or nine wins this season is well in the uh, reality of things. Uh, and then USC, I know Stanford is not very good, but the fact that they played well on defense shows me that USC might be better than I thought. I thought USC was a little overhyped given their defense, but like. If, if their defense can play like it did tonight, and then Caleb Williams is just, he's just been insane. Like He the, played the, a half. The that dude, was it. Yeah, the dude might <laughs> win. Shador Sanders, two 
Two games in a row, he's over 400 yards passing. Oh yeah, gosh. I mean, he's insane. This conference, Penix had a great game today. Uh, Washington State beat Wisconsin. How like, about Oregon's comeback against Texas Tech? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Shout out so, Aaron Maloney. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, they're, it's just a great year for this conference. It's sad that it's the last year. Um, I'm a believer in Colorado. I'm a believer in USC. I'm a believer in Utah, even though they almost Sweet lost. But again, they haven't had Cam Rising yet. So when we'll they see. get Cam back, we're going to fear them. Yeah, a lot we'll, more, we'll see what happens speaking. when they get Cam Rising back. Um, so yeah, this conference really. Good. Oregon State's been really good so far. So it, it's it's going to be there, there's going to be a playoff team from this conference. I just don't know who it is. Um, well, you you brought up League Devils and Sunday, Jesse and. Happy football Sunday for the first time. Woo! We got NFL football today. Yeah. Um, that's going to be exciting. If you and, go to, I um, believe, rlads.com, you can find all of the Sun Devils that are on rosters, either practice squad or active rosters that are going and, and playing uh, tomorrow. Even if they today. are on a practice squad, does not mean that they won't play tomorrow. So look out for them. Yep. See, could be know, elevated. They could be elevated from the practice squad for a few games until they have to get signed to the uh, active roster. So and, and shout out Lawrence Guy. This is his, I believe, his 13th season now in the NFL. So that's that's one that I still really want to shout out. Still doing great things in New England. Still, still doing great things in New England. Um, he's been maybe one of the more I guess underappreciated Sun Devil sure. greats to go into the NFL and like have a really, really good career. I'm excited too to see Rashad White yep. running back one in Tampa. Yep, yep. And there's not a lot of high expectations in Tampa, so maybe a lot of great opportunities for Rashad. I think they'll Are win the division your though. You're, did you have him on your fantasy team? Uh, I'm not on here to one of your five. I'm not here to disclose information <laughs> about my fantasy teams here on this uh, podcast. Thank <laughs> you. And nobody cares about other people's fantasy teams. <laughs> that, that, that's like a, a known thing. First of all, that's an incorrect statement. No, who cares about other people's fantasy teams other than the people in your league? Come on. Nobody cares I don't about mine. You just I don't answered mind. my question. <laughs> you, I don't mind. Jeremy, you, you really want to hear about my fantasy team? No, because I mean, you're I'm, in my league. I'm in your but... league, but I like I don't I don't mind hearing about people's fantasy teams. Okay. If they if I if I hear them have like a crazy team, I'm like how did you draft all those players and who's in your league? That's important to me. It's like a, it's like your golf game. Congrats on your 101. Like, great, cool. Rashad White's on two of my teams. Anyway, anyway, close this thing out. Uh, yeah, that's gonna do it here from Mountain America Stadium. Uh, this has been State of the Sun Devils. Please make sure to follow us on X at AZ Sports Devils. You can find all of this on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can just search Arizona Sports and this video as, as well as other podcasts that we do and everything else that happens over at Arizona Sports happens on our YouTube channel. Fantastic and, content. And Jesse? And you know, make sure tomorrow, first Cardinals game of the season, tune into that, 98.7 Arizona Sports app, arizonasports.com. Today. Or today, yeah, <laughs> later today. I know it's past midnight. Uh, <laughs> tune into Cardinals Corner after the game to hear Eric Ruby and Tyler Drake. Well, no, thoughts. I think uh, Eric Ruby got replaced. What? Brady K. Yeah, didn't you? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Brady yep. K. Uh, yep. Tyler Tyler Drake's daughter has taken over now. Yeah. Um, you can go find that YouTube. She did video. game by game predictions. Yes. Yeah, she's a toddler. It was a doozy. <laughs> she did it. She's uh, she might be the only toddler in the country co-hosting a podcast. Um, so they're going to they they have two ties. I think it was uh no, 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 don't spoil it. Yeah. Let the people watch it. Go watch it. Go watch it. Go watch it. It was that. important. Please watch it. That's going to do it for this edition of State <laughs> of the Sun Devils postgame edition. ASU uh, falls to Oklahoma State 27 to 15. Uh, alongside my good friends, Jesse Morrison and Mitch Ferreldis, I'm Jeremy Schnell. We'll talk to you next week. Good friends. We'll talk to you next week. Good friends.